Hey guys, it's your favorite English YouTube teacher, or your only English YouTube teacher, back at you with uh, your, you know, uh, weekly video blog, or whatever the language is nowadays. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead, ahead and get started with uh, this week's first video. Um, so the objective for today is for uh, you guys to read chapter 4 and point out the main ideas found in that chapter. What you will need are your usual notebook or paper slash pen or pencil or wherever you take notes. And you're going to title these notes Shipwreck Chapter 4. And so your assignment that you will be working on as we read is that you will read by yourself or you will follow along with me as I read Chapter 4. Then you will stop every few pages to write down the main idea on your notes. So you're going to stop at page 17. You're going to read 18 and 20 and then stop at 20. And then you're going to read page 21 and stop at 21 and page 22. So at the end, you should have four main ideas from those pages. And then so after you will make a summary that has the four main ideas. So the assignment that you're going to turn in on teams is a summary that has four sentences that are from the four main ideas from the chapter. So make sure that you write in complete sentences and that you turn it in your assignments tab under the title chapter four summary. OK, and it has to be four complete sentences that are uh, the four main ideas from these pages. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start reading. Um, so the fist of the Antarctic for the rest of December, endurance picked her way through the ice. Blackborrow peeled a page from the calendar in the wardroom, e wardroom every morning, counting off the days. Outside, the ocean teemed with life. Humpbacks and killer whales spouted in the distance, and the water was doubted with ice flows on, which flat, blinking seals basked in the sun. Emperor penguins bowed formally to the ship and crew as they passed. Adelie penguins surveyed them from passing icebergs and called Clark, Clark, which was the name of the expedition's biologist. The little black Adelies, with a shocking white ring around their eyes, made a comical sight for the crew as they tobogganed from off the icebergs into the water. Flocks of... So tobogganed is like tobogan in Spanish, means like they kind of slid off the ice to get into the water. Flocks of Antarctic petrels and snow petrels accompanied the ship on its journey toward the continent, diving with the high, wild screams when the crew threw their garbage overboard into the sea, while white alb albatrosses escorted endurance through the ice on their magnificent, motionless wings. Leonard Hussey, the meteorologist, serenaded the passing wildlife with his banjo. McNeish remarked that the penguins were particularly attracted to the banjo music. Hey, they're queer creatures, and I never have been surprised to see them clap in their flippers when the doctor finished a tune. When he played good old Scots tunes, that was. They're sensible birds. They liked real music, but ah, can you tell that if he played anything else, they'd break away and rush off in a panic. Hussey's version of the penguins' taste was somewhat different. They liked Negro spirituals and Irish jigs. A strong favorite of which they never tried was It's a Long, Long Way to Tipperary. But when I turned to play Scottish music, well, they just fled in horror, making off as fast as their short legs could carry them. The animals on board provided entertainment, too. Mrs. Chippy, who despite his name was actually a tomcat, discovered that he could stroll along the top of the dog kennels just out of reach of the snapping jaws. The half woods that dogs became frantic with blood, blood loss whenever the cat ambled overhead. Also on board were the two pigs purchased by McNeish for future pork roasts, as well as the rats and mice that stow away on the ship. Mrs. Chippy was too well fed to bother hunting, preferring to torment the dogs and dine on scraps from the galley. Okay, so now that you read uh chap I mean the first page of chapter four, go ahead and pause and take a minute to write down the main idea of this first page um and this little section right here. 
um, this one. But uh, just pointing out that, you know, mostly they're talking about animals at this point. So uh, go ahead and pause this and write down the main idea. I'm going to go ahead and keep reading. The ship made progress, but slow progress. Shackleton had estimated a rate of travel that would put him on the continent by the end of December. But by Christmas, they still hadn't passed the Antarctic Circle. The holiday was celebrated with turtle soup, judged hare, white bait, a type of fish, mince pies, figs, and plum pudding prepared by the cook Charles Green. When the crew raised their glasses of stout and rum to Christmas carols and toasted, to our sweethearts and wives, the answer came back, may they never meet. Bad example, you know, should not be joking about that, but it's fine. As the last days of 1914 ran out, endurance continued to creep southward toward the Weddell Sea. The course was never a straight one. Sometimes the ship found a lead of open water to the south and followed all that, that with all speed. Other times, worsely, the skipper had to sail the ship west along the edge of, of time. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Along the edge. Along the edge uh, of the pack, searching for open water to enter, even sailing north from time to time when the pack was impenetrable or standing still, waiting for a lead leader. Feeling like a rat in a trap, Worsley looked for leads from the coast nest and underside and signaled the course of the man on bridge. Ice blink, a white glare on the underside of the clouds, indicated pack ice ahead. A water sky, a dark reflection on the clouds, showed there would showed where the open water lay. Shackleton explained, Worsley, Wild, and I, with three officers, kept three watches while we were working through the pack so that we had two officers on deck all the time. The carpenter had rigged a six-foot wooden semaphore on the bridge to enable the navigating officer to give the same to give the seaman or scientist at the wheel the direction and the exact amount of hem required. This device saved time as well as the effort of shouting. Occasionally, when the frigid atmosphere was charged with water, every rope and spar on the ship was frosted white, making endurance look like another species of sparkling white as iceberg as it nosed its way through the pack. When the sun came out, icicles fell from the shrouds and shattered like glass on the decks below. Sometimes open leads of water in all directions were wreathed in wisps of frost smoke as the water began to freeze. So here you can see the ship in the ice. Shackleton commented that the effect resembled the smoke from a prairie fire. The sun never set and even when, the fo when there was fog, it was never dark. Often, the crystalline air formed mirages, and the sailors saw icebergs suspended upside down on the horizon. These mirages made navigation around the, and around the bergs very dangerous because it was often hard to tell what was a real iceberg and what was a phantom. Knowing the difference was critical, especially since endurance often passed more than 400 bergs in a 24-hour period. It was a crowded sea. On New Year's Eve, they crossed the Antarctic Circle at last, and some of the men gathered on the bridge to sing Auld Lang Syne with an accompaniment of dog howls. The ice grew denser and open water became harder and harder to find. There was no sign that the pack was opening at all. Day and night, ice growled and scraped along the sides of the ship. The men heard it grinding while they slept, while they ate or played cards, while they stoked the engines or read the charts. All right, so uh, you're going to go ahead and pause at this time to write down the main idea of these past three pages. <laughs> wow, excuse me. And so go ahead and write that down. Remember that so far they're um, talking about the ice at their experience you know uh traveling and so go ahead and pause to write that sent statement but i'm going to go ahead and keep reading we are on page 21 now when fog and ice made progress impossible shackleton ordered the ship more to a large iceberg or float when the men and dogs could take advantage of the wide flat flows to get some exercise hockey and soccer games were the sport of choice among the men as for the dogs, they could chase penguins and run wild without going too far. 
On all sides was the frigid sea where killer whales cruised in search of a meal. These beasts have a habit of locating a resting seal by looking over the edge of a floe, then striking through the ice from below in search of a meal. They would not distinguish between a seal and a man, Shackleton noticed. Uh, so you're going to go ahead and pause to write the main idea of this small paragraph. This is uh, page 21. And then um, we're going to go ahead and continue. On one occasion, when endurance was moored to a flow, the crew hauled out the motor sledge. Ordelise, the motor expert, got the machine going, and Marston pretended it was an ice cream wagon. Several sailors did imitations of Cockney boys begging for a treat as Marston hemmed up as an ice cream vendor. When the kidding was done, however, the men gave the motor sledge a test run. On the uneven surface of the ice, the machine turned out to be awkward and impractical, and plans to use it were abandoned. As the days went on, endurance crept forward through leads that closed in behind her. Open water was becoming harder and harder to find. A shifting mass of ice stretched from one horizon to the next. Two and a half weeks into the year, Hurley wrote in his diary, It is now seven weeks since we first entered the pack ice, and since then it has been almost an incessant battle. Incessant meaning constant and not ending. The weather, the weather was not improving and the ice showed no signs of opening. On the next day, January 19th, the fist of the Antarctic closed around the ship. Endurance was surrounded by ice pack with no water, open water in sight. They had sailed 12,000 miles from London. They had picked their way through 1,000 miles of ice pack. Now they were less than 100 miles from the continent itself, but endurance would never reach it. So there you can see uh, a picture of one of the icebergs that the men saw. And then the last picture is this. This is where, this is what the men could see. This, this, they could only see ice, no open water for the ship to sail on. So uh, you're going to go ahead and pause the video. Well, actually, that's actually the end of the video. So go ahead and write the main um, idea for this page. Um, and don't forget that um, your assignment is that you're going to take the four main ideas that you wrote and you're going to put them into a single summary on your assignments. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. You have a wonderful day.